Hello everybody and welcome back. So as many of you know, back in early August, I started hosting the first ever Tech with Tim Code Jam. Essentially, this was a coding competition where you could go in either groups of one or up to four people and submit some kind of project that fit the theme for this Code Jam, which was Generate. Now, all of this was run through my Discord server. You can find a link to that in the description. But now the Code Jam is over. It lasted for 30 days. All the participants have submitted their projects, and I'm going to be showcasing to you the top nine projects. Now, the way we picked these top nine projects is anyone who submitted, I think we had about 50 submissions, actually had to vote on their top three favorite projects that were not their own project that was submitted. So that gave us a list of actually our top 12 projects. So they were top 10, but there was a few ties. So I've pruned that down to nine so I can fit them all in this video. And what I'm going to be doing is showcasing all of those projects to you guys. Some of them are really cool. And then I'm going to be choosing and announcing the top three winners. All right, so that's all I wanted to say. Last thing, if you want to join the Code Jam, if you want to join in on weekly coding challenges, a bunch of other stuff, as I said, join the Discord server from the link in the description. Now let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to dive in in a second, but I want to quickly give a big thank you to everyone who participated. And I just want to mention that these projects are at very different levels. So there's some of these projects that you guys are going to look at and be like, that's amazing. There's some other ones you're going to look at and be like, oh, why is that up here? I just want to make you aware that people of any age were able to participate in this. So there's some people that are, you know, 13, 14 years old that were making projects. We have some other people that probably are computer science students and in a group of four making projects. So of course, we're going to see different levels of projects here. And please just be nice. You know, people put a lot of work into these projects. And even though it may not seem the most impressive thing in the world, they put a lot of effort in. And well, I appreciate that effort and just want to give them a thank you for participating. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first project project I'm looking at is the abstract art generator. Now, I believe this was done by one person, and I'm pretty sure this was done by Burak Kali. Now, I apologize because I'm probably mispronouncing that name, but I'm just going to boot the project up and then let's showcase it. All right, so this is the abstract art generator. So I've actually been messing with it a little bit before I started showing you guys this. Let me just undo what I did. Uh, but this is generating a bunch of random art when I press generate randomly. And it looks like there's all these filters on the side here that I can kind of mess with. Uh, and that will actually give me something that fits those filters. So if I press generate now, you can see I'm getting all these kind of rings. I can choose the color palette. Let's go soft gray. Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. So there's all these different color palettes here. You can see the colors right there. Looks like I can choose all of the different properties for the different layers. So let's go with filled polygons and cornered. And wow, yeah, that gives some really interesting and cool shapes. Also looks like I can put some kind of overlays on here. So this is like some kind of gradient or a little ring around. Okay, I can remove that. There's a help button. I can lock these uh, filters, I guess. And then if I press generate randomly, yeah, so it won't change the locked properties. That's awesome. And then I can export this. Let's just export this as image. And yeah, we can go to the desktop. And there we go. Image is there. Let me give it a second. And I think my computer's lagging. Some reason I'm having trouble opening the image, but I can see the preview here. So I'm going to believe that this is working fine. And I guess that is the abstract art generator. So just to give some thoughts on this, this is a really cool idea. I'm really impressed by the stuff this is able to create. It actually looks really good. And even just the number of options that are provided here in terms of like the color palette uh, and like all the different layers and the complexity and the shape size and how nice the UI looks. This looks really polished. I can imagine you put a lot of effort into this and I can really appreciate even just, you know, the spacing being the same, for example, in between these two options, having buttons being consistent and kind of spaced out evenly. Yeah, it looks really nice, really awesome job. And if you did this by yourself, give yourself a pat on the back because I can't even imagine just trying to think about this right now, how I would go about doing something like this. All right, so moving on to the next project here, we have Stranded. I believe this is by Franklin, Dennis, and Wow He Fresh. Uh, you can see them kind of on the right hand side here. Looks like this was made in C sharp. And I have actually looked at this. It looks like this was made in Unity. Now, I'm not going to read through all of this because uh, I'm not reading through all of them, but I believe they called their team Pixel Jam. And yeah, there was three of them. Awesome. All right, so let me boot up this project and let's see what it looks like. 
All right, so I got the project booted up and yeah, this is a 3D game made in Unity and already really impressive. I've never made any like 3D games, let alone anything in Unity. So it's really cool when I see this stuff working, I can actually run it on my computer. Uh, but it looks like I'm in a maze and I believe from doing some basic reading that this maze is randomly generated. So it has these things that slide up and down. First of all, that's a really cool touch. I wonder what happens if I stand on it and it goes up. Or maybe when, oh, when I get close to it, it opens. Okay, that's how that works. And I believe I'm looking for, wow, okay, I don't wanna go off the edge of the map here, that's interesting. I'm looking for like the next level or some room or something like that. So I will run around a little bit and see if I can find how to advance forward. Uh, but if I can't seem to find that, then I might just have to assume that this works. Oh, wow, and I have fallen off the edge. Okay, so it seems like I am continually falling through the floor when I die. Uh, I'm not sure why that's happening, but I'm gonna leave it at that. It looks like that was a randomly generated maze. Really cool, I like the 3D structure. I like this little guy in the animations. Uh, and yeah, I've never made anything with Unity, so it's always impressive when I'm able to see kind of a finished game. All right, so this next one I have here is called Deep Card. I'm trying to figure out who this is by. Ah, here it is, so it's by uh, Nuria, Ido, and Dolev. Um, I'm probably mispronouncing that, so again, apologize for that. And again, called Deep Card. Looks like this is a website. It says it was JavaScript, Python, CSS, and HTML. And the website may take a few seconds to load. Okay, that's fine. So let's look at this. Oh, that loaded pretty much instantly. Uh, we have Deep Card. We made a deep learning neural network. We fed it some greeting cards. Here's what happened. Let me click this. Okay, so a little about page. Actually, let's go in full screen mode. Uh, this website makes personalized cards for birthdays and other occasions. After making the card, you can get a custom link to give out to your friends. Everything on this website is absolutely free to use. Awesome. All right, so let's start now. What type of card do we want? Let's go with a good luck card. Cool. What's your name? My name is Tim. And hello there. Who is the lucky recipient? Let's just go with Tech with Tim. All right, next. Uh, give us a few words to start off. Let's go with Hello World, the classic programming. Uh, and sure, finish. Loading your card, little Pac-Man thing. This is kind of cool. Loading the algorithm, feeding the developers, debugging code, and here we are. All right, so this is cool. Generate a card to tech with Tim. It says hover to open. I am, oh, there we go. So I guess my computer was lagging or something. And there we go. Hello world is believing to live, but I think. All right, so it seems as though their neural network may not have learned to speak English quite yet, but this still is really cool. I assume this is the link. Okay, link copy to clipboard, awesome. Let's see what happens if I go to a new tab here and I open this and awesome, I get the card. Now I believe this card is a different color. Uh, I don't know why that's the case. I'm just gonna assume that was intentional maybe, uh, but that is neat. So it just generates a card. I guess it's using AI for the string here. A nice little animation when I hover over top of it. Yeah, really cool idea. And again, definitely fits the generate theme. Awesome, let's move on to the next project. All right, so next I have the star map generator. So generate a star map biased on the settings you choose. We have Little Finchy and John Paul I <laughs> as the authors for this one. All right, let me boot that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the star map generator in front of me. First of all, I like the fact that it comes with some welcome text here, so I kind of get an idea of how it works. Immediately, this just seems like a really cool idea. I've never seen anything like this before. It's like kind of like constellations almost. It looks like it's like randomly generating a bunch of stars, and then it actually has some text popping up here. So really cool idea, really unique. I've never even heard of something like this. So let me just try doing something like Tim. Let's see what that gives me. Wow, so it actually just makes the stars out of Tim and kind of randomizes that. Really impressive. I don't know how you guys went about doing that, but that's really cool. Uh, I'm assuming each letter maybe you mapped to some kind of pattern and then maybe you randomized it. Uh, let's go hello world, generate that one off the screen. But yeah, that makes sense. Let's move the Y down a bit. Um, save, oh, I don't want to save image, generate. Okay, there we go. Actually, let's try to save it. Let's just see what this looks like if I save this. Save it as hello. And do we get it popping up? Hello, can I open it? I think my computer's just having some uh, issues opening images, but I believe that that is working. Let's go to settings. Oh wow, so I can change a bunch of stuff here. I can change the colors. So I guess I can use green for the background, for the stars. 
Let's go with like a, like a red color here. Okay, use that for the stars. Constellation density. Let's see what happens if I crank that up. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll show the constellations. Number of stars. Let's go with 10,000 back and generate. And wow. Okay. Yeah. So that is a drastic change. Looks like I can change the size. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. So now I can actually see all of the things popping up. Awesome. That's really neat. And I guess I can change the X position too. Let's go 23 generate. And there we go. Awesome. So I think that pretty much showcases what this is, but really unique idea, really impressed by this. Um, maybe the UI could <laughs> use a little bit of work over here, but I'm not too picky. This is just a neat idea and definitely fits the theme of generate. So the next project I have here is the all in one generator. Looks like this was done by four people. We got uh, SARS two, uh, Toho Tor. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try with that one. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know what, guys? You. This is the people that did it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother butchering their names anymore. And yeah, it looks like this is a website. So let me boot that up. All right, so I have the all-in-one generator running. So this is just running on a local web server right now. But first of all, just initial impressions, really awesome looking website. This is really clean, looks really prof professional. You've got music generator, a <laughs> nice little thing here, maze generator, password generator, color generator, date generator, subscribe to receive updates, <laughs> uh, address 1234 Django Street. Nice, nice, nice. I can appreciate that. All right, let's see how one of these generators works. Get started. Oh, I guess that just brings this to me. Okay, let's go image generator. Okay, this is cool. So this is reminding me kind of of the art generator. Obviously, it just randomly does it. I don't get to pick any parameters. Uh, let's generate a new image. Okay, that's an interesting looking one. Another cool one. I'm curious how they did this or what they're doing to generate this image with, but this is really neat. So they're definitely generating something. Awesome. Let's move on to music. Uh, okay, I'm going to assume you didn't finish that one. Uh, let's go back to the other page. Okay, let's go to maze then and generate maze. Okay, that's really neat. So it's generating a bunch of different mazes. You can see the starting position is kind of moving around. Awesome, awesome. Would have been cool if you actually solved the maze, but I know that's a little bit further. Uh, let's go password, uh, password requirement. I guess I put like the number of things I want. Okay, let's go with that. Generate a new password. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Let's go with like 45. Can you handle that? Nice. Giving me a nice strong password. Uh, color, create a new color. Generate color. Let's see if it does this. Boom, it's giving me a bunch of different hex color values and showing me what they look like, as well as the RGB code. That's actually pretty cool. Awesome. And then date, create a new date, and it generates a new date. Awesome. So this is pretty impressive. I like the fact that you guys went with kind of some smaller projects, but tied them all in together. That's really cool. And the website, especially this front page here, just looks really nice, really clean. Uh, yeah, super impressed by this. Awesome work, guys. Let's move on to the next project. All right. So the next one I have here is chest endgame training. Uh, looks like I can actually just go right here to the website. Uh, oh, there's all this stuff here. I'm not going to read through all of that, but let's go to the website and see what this is. All right, so chest endgame training is what this one is called. And this is the website. So they act, actually, I didn't have to run this. It's hosted on Heroku, it looks like. It's a select checkmate in a number of moves. I can do random or I can choose like four or five. Oh, okay. So I think I understand what this is doing. It's saying white is uh, the current move and checkmate can be achieved in four moves. That's really cool. So what it's trying to get you to do is being is be able to look at this board and determine where you would need to move to uh, actually achieve checkmate. So that's, I guess, why it's called end game training. Let's go with five and just make sure this works for different ones. Awesome. So it's saying, OK, there is a way to achieve checkmate in five moves. Can you figure it out? That's really cool. Now, I wish there was some way where it would tell me what that was because I'm not very good at chess. So uh, it's going to be difficult for me to determine if this is actually working or not. But I guess we can go with one and see if we can figure that out uh, if there's some move where we go for checkmate. But it looks like, yeah, it's generating some kind of board that we could move to to actually checkmate this piece. Uh, I'm not very good, but I'm going to assume if I put the knight here, if white's move, then that would checkmate the king here. Uh, but yeah, that is really cool. So nice work. Um, again, would have been cool if there was maybe some way that I could actually see what the moves were. Uh, but good idea, especially if you're good at chess, you would probably appreciate this if you're trying to train and kind of test your brain and figure out the checkmate. Awesome. Nice work. Let's move on to the next one. 
All right, so next one I have here is Password Generator. Looks like this is by Silly Goose and Swanamon. Otherwise, we'll call him Kevin, I guess. Uh, let me boot this up and let's check out what it is. All right, so we got the Password Generator here. Looks like I can pick the security, so I can go weak, medium, secure, strong. Let's go with strong uh, for password length. Let's go minimum length 10, maximum length 20. Sure, we want a capital letter and a symbol. Let's also make it have two slashes in it, I guess, uh, and generate password. All right, sweet. So we got C dollar sign. Yeah, just some random generated password. That's kind of cool. Let's keep doing this. And yeah, that is working. Now, my only complaint is that I had two slashes here and it's just moving one. I guess what that's saying is like, okay, just put stuff here that you want to show up in the password and we'll make sure that it shows up. But if it's duplicate characters, then I guess it just assumes, oh, you just want one of those. Anyways, this is neat. I guess if I get rid of symbol, then we only get, well, I guess pound. Is pound still a symbol? I don't know. But anyways, this is kind of working. And yeah, that is cool. So nice work, generates password. I also like the fact that you have this. So the first part of the password is a slice of the alphabet. Copy paste the passwords, do not save when window is closed. So making that a bit user friendly and telling me, hey, I got to copy this beforehand uh, if I want to save this password. Awesome, nice work, and let's move on. All right, so next project I have here is the tree generator. This one is short enough that I can actually read through it. It says this is made using C++ and OpenGL. and is a mimicking fractal patterns using recursion. Awesome, okay? So yeah, we can see this is written in C, 89.4%, C++, 9.6, and GL, SL. I don't even know what that is, 1%. All right, so <laughs> immediately, Seeming a little bit more advanced than some of the Python stuff. I mean, just because it's written in C and all those languages. Uh, but let me run this and let's see what it looks like. All right, so when I run it, I get this little uh, thing popping up here. It says, this is a tree generator using fractal approach, blah, blah, blah. Rendering is done using custom engine made during the jam, using modern OpenGL techniques, use WASD to move, mouse to rotate the camera, click to generate a new tree and escape to exit. Awesome, let's press enter, I guess, and see what this is. Wow, okay, look, can I go full screen? Oops, <laughs> I didn't wanna do that. I wanna go into full screen mode. Uh, F11, ah, oh, it's not working. Okay, you know what, I'll just do it here. And I guess I can kind of mess around and see what this looks like. Wow, okay, that is really cool. So this is a really realistic looking tree. Like I'm I'm quite impressed by uh, what this looks like. Can I, I wanna go down. I don't know how to go down. Uh, let's keep clicking. Oh wow, another tree, okay. So this generates like pretty fast. Immediately knowing how this is done just using recursion, I'm pretty impressed by how many fractals there is and how quickly this actually generates. And oh my God, this is a huge tree. Let me see if I can, Jesus, if I can move out and see this properly. Yeah, this is a really neat project. Awesome work. I've never messed around with like 3D graphics and stuff before, so this is really cool to see. Uh, and looks like it quit out after that. But awesome work, tree generator looks really cool and really impressed with all this rendering and 3D stuff. I have no idea how to do any of that. Now, I apologize, I forgot to mention this is by Storm Creeper. It looks like this is by one single person, the tree generator. I didn't see your name in the side, so I forgot to mention it, but Storm Creeper, nice work on the tree generator. All right, so next we have a password encryption generator. So I'll go into that in a second. Looks like this is by noms, uh, hashtag 2168. I believe that is a Discord tag. And one of these two guys is him <laughs> in terms of the Discord name. Again, I'll link this down below and get in case you guys wanna check that out. But let's boot this up and let's see what this password encryption generator looks like. All right, so here it is, a little bit small and some of the stuff is kinda of cut off, that's fine. But let's pick a method, let's go MD5. Let's go, hello, my name is Tim. Let's see how this is encrypted. I guess I can view and unview. Oh, okay, that's kinda of cool, like I open, I shut. Uh, and it gives me the uh, encryption, nice. And then I can copy it to, to clipboard. Let's see if this, actually works, notepad, paste, awesome. So that does indeed work, that's great. Uh, whoops, go back to the in generator here. Let's try with a few other methods. Okay, and it's giving me the encryption. Uh, I don't know what hex I does. I guess it changes it to hexadecimal maybe, maybe that's what it's saying. Yeah, actually that would probably make sense, hex I. Uh, and I guess I can view and unview, and I guess that's really all to show for this project. I guess there's just a few different methods. All right, so that was the last one. Nice work on that. Now I'm going to showcase and announce the top three winners.
So in third place, I have the Star Map Generator by Little Finchy and John Paul. I wasn't sure if that's a bunch of eyes. Yeah, it looks like John Paul I. Congratulations, guys. You have come third place. A quick refresher. This is what their project was, the Star Generator. This is just really cool. And the reason why I've selected this for third place is because this is a really unique and creative idea. I haven't, I didn't see anyone do anything like this at all. All the other projects I saw were something that I could have predicted. I never thought anyone was gonna do something that looked like this. And even though I have a few complaints on kind of how the UI is laid out and especially this settings page, I'm willing to overlook those just because of the idea, the execution, and just what a neat project this really is. So congratulations, guys, you've come third place. And as I'm gonna mention, after all these projects, I will reach out to you and talk to you about how you can win your prize. So in second place, I have the all-in-one generator by these four people over here. Congratulations, guys. I do not know how to pronounce your name, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, but let me just refresh you on their project and talk about why I picked it. So this is the all-in-one generator. Obviously, the reason's pretty clear. It looks really clean. Um, I'm sure you guys put a lot of work into the UI and the front end of this website. You have a bunch of different ways to generate things like password, color, date, image, maze. I'm going to forgive the fact that your music doesn't work, although that definitely was a factor in my decision. Uh, but overall, really good job. And I like the fact that this really fits the theme. And I can tell you guys put a significant amount of work into the UI and making this just feel really clean and really good. So congratulations. As I've said, I will reach out to you guys and talk to you about how you can claim your second place prize. Now in first place, as I'm sure you guys all have guessed, I have the Abstract Art Generator by Burak Kali. Congratulations, this was by far the best project, not to put anyone else's down. The UI is really clean, everything looks great, it works amazingly, it creates really awesome stuff. Like this just looks so cool, I can imagine people actually wanting to use this as like backgrounds and wallpapers and all kinds of stuff like that. You have the fact for overlays, you have the help button. This just feels overall really polished, it feels like this is a finished project, and while it just is a great really awesome looking and just fully complete project. And that's why I'm picking it. It's one of the only ones on this list that I feel like doesn't have any bugs or small mistakes. You put a ton of effort into it and well, you definitely deserve to win. So I'll be reaching out to you. You are lucky because you are an individual, which means you are going to take the entire prize that would have gone to potentially four people by yourself. But congratulations and uh, thank you again to everybody for participating in this competition. Again, I will link all these GitHub repositories down below. If you want to enter in the next Tech with Tim Code Jam, hopefully we're going to have it be a bit more organized this time because this was our first time running through this competition. But definitely check out my Discord server down below. So with that being said, that has been it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to quickly give another massive thank you to everyone who participated and a big thank you to all my Discord staff for making this possible. Although I am participating in this somewhat and running a little bit of the competition, these guys, my staff, are really the ones that handle all of this and they just deserve a huge thank you please let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite and hopefully i'll see you participating in the next code jam over at my discord server which again you can find from the link in the description all right so take it easy guys hope you enjoy and i will see you in another youtube video